Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be tackling a question, theory, that was sent to me via a subscriber on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram already, then go do it. The question, put quite succinctly, is this. If Salazar Sutherland was such an advocate for pure blood supremacy, how is it that, many centuries later, his own Hogwarts house allows half-bloods? Specifically, we're going to be tackling this question in relation to the Sorting Hat, as the hat is ultimately responsible for student placement. The Sorting Hat, a magical artifact at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, has the essential task of assigning new students to one of the four houses, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, or Slytherin. Each house was founded by one of the four original founders of Hogwarts, Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Rowena Ravenclaw, and Salazar Sutherland. The hat was created when Godric Gryffindor pulled his completely regular hat off of his head and made the suggestion to the other founders that, using their collective magic, they enchant the hat and turn it into a sentient being. The purpose of this was simple. They wanted to leave something behind that could carry on their house legacies long after their deaths. As long as they were alive, the founders could easily select students for their houses based on their own values and characteristics. But one day they wouldn't be there, which led to their desire to leave behind something that was capable of selecting students. And why was this so important, you may ask? Well, each of the Hogwarts founders valued very different things, imbuing their own characteristics into their respective houses. These characteristics would become the defining attributes of each house. These attributes can be summed up in the Sorting Hat's own words. By Gryffindor, the bravest were, prized far beyond the rest. For Ravenclaw, the cleverest, would always be the best. For Hufflepuff, hard workers were, most worthy of admission, and power-hungry Slytherin loved those of great ambition. In essence, Godric Gryffindor valued bravery, Helga Hufflepuff prized loyalty, Rowena Ravenclaw sought wisdom, and Salazar Slytherin prized cunning and ambition. However, it is certainly worth noting that these are not the only traits attributed with each house, just some of the more noteworthy ones. To perform its task, the hat uses legilimency, which is the art of magically navigating through a person's mind. As soon as the hat is placed on your head, there's nothing it won't know about you. This is reflected in the Sorting Hat's own song. There's nothing hidden in your head the Sorting Hat can't see. But one major consideration that needs to be made here is that Salazar Slytherin's vision for his house went far beyond these basic traits. You see, he was a firm believer in the supremacy of pure-blood wizards and sought to admit only those with pure magical lineage into his house. And it was this very belief that created tension among the other founders and eventually led to Slytherin's departure from the school. Given this history, it may seem contradictory that the Sorting Hat, designed to select students based on the founders' values, would place half-blood wizards like Severus Snape, Dolores Umbridge, and Tom Riddle into Slytherin House. Today, I want to explore the reasons behind the Sorting Hat's selection of half-bloods for Slytherin, despite the house's foundation on pure blood supremacy. Blood status is one of the most controversial aspects of the wizarding world, a concept in which wizarding families can be distinguished by the level of magically endowed family members. Generally speaking, people are slotted into one of the following categories, pure blood, half blood, muggle born, or simply muggle. Pure blood refers to a witch or wizard who has magical ancestry on both sides of their family and has no known muggle, non-magical ancestors. Half blood refers to a witch or wizard with mixed blood and heritage. That is, they have magical abilities and come from a magical bloodline, but also have at least one muggle parent or ancestor. Muggle-born refers to a witch or wizard with no magical ancestry, who is born to non-magical parents but possesses magical abilities. And lastly, muggle refers to a non-magical person with no magical blood or magical abilities. And what's worth mentioning is that Slytherin's vision for his house was not merely a preference for pure blood students, but rather a strict requirement. He believed that only those who could prove their magical heritage should be admitted to Hogwarts, instilling this belief into the very foundation of his house. So I ask again, what caused the infiltration of half-bloods into Slytherin House? By admitting them, it appears to contradict the values of the house itself. The first thing we need to look at is how Slytherin House, the wizarding world, has evolved over time. Hogwarts School was founded in 990 AD, 
And with such a considerable time span, it goes without saying that much changed in the wizarding world from then to now, with Slytherin House being no exception. Here are my thoughts. It would appear that, over the centuries, Slytherin House has undergone a gradual transformation as the values and beliefs of the wizarding world evolved. While Salazar Slytherin's original vision for his house was centered around blood purity and the supremacy of pure blood wizards, I'm of the impression that the house has since adapted to accommodate a more diverse range of students and values. One factor contributing to this evolution is the influence of the other founders on the Sorting Hat selection criteria. As the Sorting Hat was imbued with the thoughts and values of all four founders, it has the ability to adapt and change its selection process to reflect the evolving values of the school and the wizarding community. This means that, over time, the Sorting Hat may have placed less emphasis on blood purity when sorting students into Slytherin House, allowing for a more diverse range of students to be admitted. Another factor contributing to the evolution of Slytherin House is the changing values within the wizarding world. As the harmful consequences of blood purity beliefs and discrimination against muggle-borns and half-bloods became increasingly apparent, many wizards and witches began to reject these ideas in favor of a more inclusive and egalitarian approach. This shift in values likely influenced the students sorted into Slytherin, as well as the house's overall culture and reputation. The presence of half-bloods and muggle-borns in Slytherin House also played a role in its evolution. As these students brought their own perspectives, values, and experiences to the house, they contributed to a more diverse and inclusive environment within Slytherin. This diversity allowed for a broader range of qualities and traits to be valued and celebrated within the house, moving it further away from Salazar Slytherin's original vision of pure-blood supremacy. However, despite these changes, it would be a lie to reject the notion that the legacy of Salazar Slytherin's vision for his house still lingers. Slytherin House continues, and will forever continue, to be associated with dark magic, ambition, and cunning, and its members are often judged based on the actions of past Slytherins who upheld the blood purity ideals. However, the evolution of Slytherin House over time demonstrates that it is possible for the values and identity of a house to change, reflecting the growth and progress of the wizarding world as a whole. The growth of the wizarding world with regards to prejudice, as depicted in the Harry Potter series, can be seen as an allegory for our own real world. Throughout the series, we witness the harmful consequences of discrimination, prejudice, and a belief in the supremacy of certain groups over others. And though our own world has made significant developments over the centuries, I'd venture to say that we, like Slytherin House, have a long way to go. But while this purported evolution of Slytherin House is an easy idea to warm up to, I may simply be giving the house too much credit. It's entirely possible that the placement of half-bloods and muggle-borns into Slytherin is the product of something else altogether, and as it happens, I've got a theory prepared which addresses just that scenario. I think it's possible that, when enchanting the Sorting Hat, Godric Gryffindor placed a loophole on the hat, unbeknown to the school's other founders, that would undermine Slytherin's advocacy for pure-blood witches and wizards. Godric Gryffindor, known for his bravery and chivalry, foresaw the potential problems that Salazar Slytherin's discriminatory views could pose for the school and the other founders, and in order to counteract this, created a loophole in the sorting hat to allow non-pureblood students to be sorted into Slytherin House. This act would ensure that the house would not become a breeding ground for pureblood supremacy and would also help to promote diversity and inclusivity within Hogwarts. I imagine that this loophole could have been introduced in a few different ways. 1. Subtly influencing the Sorting Hat's decision-making process Gryffindor could have included a hidden enchantment that would encourage the Hat to consider non-pureblood students for Slytherin House, regardless of their blood status. 2. Exploiting Salazar Slytherin's own enchantments Gryffindor might have found a way to manipulate Slytherin's enchantments on the Hat, turning them against his own intentions and allowing non-pureblood students to be sorted into his house. 3 creating a failsafe mechanism. Gryffindor could have created a failsafe within the hat's enchantment that would activate if the other founders were no longer present, allowing the hat to sort non-purebloods into Slytherin House in their absence. This is just a theory, but it would certainly highlight Godric Gryffindor's foresight and commitment to ensuring that Hogwarts remained a diverse and inclusive institution. It also helps that the hat they use for the sorting hat happened to be one of Godric's own. 
Another fact to consider here is that it's never fully explained why Salazar left the school. We know that him and the other founders disagreed, and we know that he had a major disagreement with Godric Gryffindor prompting his departure, but it's never properly explained what the exact catalyst was for this. On this line of thought, it's entirely possible that, after unveiling Gryffindor's loophole in the sorting hat, he simply no longer wanted anything to do with his co-founders. What do you think? Do you think that Slytherin House has grown in a more inclusive, positive direction over time? Or do you think that Godric Gryffindor was responsible for the house's change? Let me know down in the comments section below. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.